Hi, it's Tony again regarding the Worcester 28i 28SI Mark II. On the previous video, we spoke about the hot water problem. What would happen if you run a hot water tap and the boiler didn't fire up? Now, Peter said it could be the hot water sensor. So, if you've got the answer, well, I'll tell you what the answer could be. It's not 100%, but the first thing what I would be looking at would be the flow turbine. Because what happens when the water flows, it goes through the flow turbine. It spins, creates a voltage, goes to the PCB and starts the activation. So that's the first thing I would be checking for. You can check this by checking the voltages on this cable, there's three of them. One gives a constant voltage, it's very low, it's only about 5 volts DC. And when it's working, I can't remember the exact wire, but the return wire will give a reduced voltage about 3 volts. The PCB will pick up this drop in voltage and then it will start the activation for the hot water. So that's how you can carry up the test. Alright uh, Pete, have you got a question? So you're checking the resistances on those three wires on the flow turbine? No, yeah. there's not resistance. The voltage, yeah. It's a voltage. And one's low voltage. The, you... the, the both low voltage. Yeah. One, one voltage comes from the board, it's a constant voltage. Yeah. Then the PCB is looking for a drop in voltage mm -hmm. to tell it that the, the um, hot water is working. So the flow turbine creates this drop in voltage. The board detects it and that's how it starts a hot water. Okay, so I haven't finished. If you Okay, so you tested it on, and on volts AC. Are you testing it at, which end are you testing it at the board or at, at the other end? You can test it at the plug yeah. Or you can test it on the PCB. It's pretty tricky to do, but you can test it in a plug. You can get your um, multimeter down there yeah. and test it there. Okay, fair enough. Going back to the hot water sensor, what you said before, if that was a problem with that, you would get a flashing light. This over light will be flashing that will be giving a sensor fault. Other than that, in fact the sensor was okay, if the mist is okay then the only thing you're left with is the main PCB. So that would be your hot water problem. If you've got any more comments we'd like to hear from you, just drop us a post. Now you've got any more questions Pete? Yeah, um, obviously the air yeah, pressure fits in the swan, the, 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 sorry, the fan to check. Uh, but obviously if it's firing up and scintillating already, you know they're okay. Or it wouldn't fire up and scintillating either. Well, that's true. We're going to move on to the scintillating side. If it was the fan or anything, you'd have a code flashing again. Here, that there's a problem with the air pressure switch or fan. So you'd have the relevant flashing light, which gives you that indication. Now for the central heating side, you've got your timer, external controls calling for heat, your thermostat turned up, then that's going to start the pump, that'll run first. Once that starts, then the PCB is going to put power onto the fan, fan's going to operate Make the air pressure switch, that then will send the signal back down to the board, start the ignition sequence, start the spark, which is there on the electrodes, gas valve will open, send gas out, be ignited by the electrodes, detected by the flame detection probe which is at the back, send the signal down to the board that the flame can stay on and then the ignition sequence will carry on. There's a couple of um, other controls up here. 
you've got the main primary sensor and you've got an overheat thermostat at the back there as well. Them two got the calling and then you will get the main burner coming on. On the fan unit, on these fans, you've got a two speed fan. So when the fire lays up to temperature or when it starts, it'll run on low speed. And then after a minute or so, it'll go up to high speed. You've got the air pressure switch. And so that's the electrodes and the flame sensor. It's difficult to see, is at the back. So that's the end of our tour around this Worcester 28 I Mark II, SI Mark II. As I said, if you've got any questions, any more comments, we'd like to hear from you. And you can subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you on the next video.